Hello and welcome. We are live. Live, live, live. Are you there, Lisa? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you quite well. Okay, I think we're live. I'm not sure where. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where, but if if nothing else, if nothing else, while we're recording, but I think we're live on Periscope. Maybe it doesn't look like I'm seeing it on my Facebook page, but we're supposed to be there. If not, we'll look into that uh, in the future. But today, uh, this is Sue Ann. Um, I'm here today uh, with our very first, very, my very very first uh, live. Mix, Sizzle, and Shake Your Business podcast on video. Woohoo! And <laughs> I'm the biggest chicken because I have a show ready to go, but I keep chickening out on doing it. Social feels so weird lately, and um, I'm so excited about business, even though things are rough in the world right now. I want to, you know, still keep going and keep going on. And um, so I have my friend here, Lisa, my friend, colleague, um, and an inspiring person, Lisa, from Inspired to Thrive, is here to talk with us today about Google My Business. Woo! Thank you, Suyan, for having me today. Um, I'm so excited that I'm trying to, you know, stretch myself and do a live video podcast on audio, on video. I mean, a live audio, video, whatever. We're moving into new places digitally today, going live. And I hope that with your inspiration doing it today with you backing me up, I will be able to do my next production that I have planned um, on a, as a live broadcast. Now, I am really bad about setting up a schedule because my work, my whole career, has never been on a set schedule and so I have to I guess commit if I'm going to do a live podcast show to a specific day and time do you think that's a good idea Lisa <laughs> I do if you can but I don't like having too many things set either um, I have to nowadays because of my client work but if I have to have one more appointment I kind of cringe so Oh, I know. You know, in in my whole career, I've been on a fly by the seat schedule because when the phone, fax, or email would ding, you know, things would change, and you you know kind of had to go with the flow with what your customers are up to. Um, so I just wanted to say welcome to everybody. I thank you for being here. I hope you'll enjoy the show. Uh, Lisa works with clients for Google My Business. She handles their Google My Business accounts. And I was thinking I don't have any interest in Google My Business because I spent a lot of time actually trying to... Um, create my digital business strictly digitally okay completely digitally and nothing else um so i didn't want or didn't think that there was a need to be on google my business i looked at it as a local you know mapping thing for people who are on their phones and they're trying to map you know into you know get people lo locally in other words i thought it was sort of about that and then i started to understand that it, there's a lot more to it um and also i recently heard a tweet chat a vc buzz twat chat that had a guest on it of course my phone's ringing sorry um <laughs> that had a um guest on it that said that digital businesses couldn't be on google my business which I don't know if it's since COVID, but I believe that's changed as well. Can you tell us something about it, Lisa? Google My Business over, like, generally? Yes, yes. So Google My Business can be used for local businesses and digital businesses, which is something maybe about two years old now. Because originally, Google My Business was just for being on the map for people to drive to your location, to your store. About two years ago, when I started my business full time, that changed. So I got on board. I understood there were a lot of SEO factors, you know, that it, that played into it. So I said, I got to jump on this, you know, and learn what it's all about. It has had some changes with COVID. They're they're very slow to have um, anyone that does a review for you on Google My Business. It may take a lot longer to go through. Any changes you make on your Google my business may also take longer because of COVID right now. So do you have to, to be, 
considered part of Google My Business? Is there a process that you actually have to go in as a business owner or for your business and say, hey, Google, it's me, and here's my info, or does it search you out? Because I think it does a little of each, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you, you have to verify your business. Um, in the past, it was all done through a postcard in the mail, which is kind of funny because <laughs> it's a digital company, Google, right? And they would send out postcards in the mail. You'd have to fill them out, send them back, and then your business would be verified. Today, it can be done online in most cases. There's certain um, requirements that are needed. And so if you can't do it digitally, they still use the old fashioned postcard through the mail to verify and they send you a code. So either the code, if you do it online, the code comes to your mobile device, your cell phone sends a code, put the code in and then you're verified and you can stop filling out all your information. Otherwise That's you have awesome. to wait for the mail. Okay, so what what I've learned, and I'll put a link in um, the show notes later, but one of the things I learned is that, that you want to try to own your own business as keywords so that if somebody puts Inspire to Thrive, for example, they would be able to see immediately you would own that space, in other words. So... Um, I'll put a link into Andy Crestadinia's article where I learned some some of the points about this, and he did a short video that's helpful. But let let's do you mind if we take a look at Lisa at your page and see what it looks like? Let me screen share Lisa's page um, to show you. Um, excuse me for bending down here. I got to get the screen share going. But I'm going to show you Lisa's page, and I put in the words inspire to thrive i put those three words in to get that there and you can see that expanded on the side this is called a knowledge uh, panel and you can see that expanded on the side there for lisa because she's awesome and great you have a map a digital ma a map there you have reviews and a rating of 5.5 no it's five but i gave you more than five because you're awesome and um you have her book products that you can go in and click right directly to pur purchase her book on amazon and you have reviews from people which with actual quotes which is really awesome um and you even see her latest um one of her latest was this off it looks like it's off of i can't tell if it's um it's a google my business post and i i shared my anniversary video on google my business oh you were oh yeah. i thought it was picking it up off of social yeah. and yeah. also it says it shows search uh related uh things to um to lisa uh, other people she's associated with other people in her space it shows her linkedin it shows uh, her Pinterest, her Facebook and photos, her home. I mean, it contact me is right up top. I think Lisa's doing something really well. It um, also shows at the very bottom, if you scroll to the bottom, it gives you your Facebook reviews as well, or your Facebook people who rate you on Facebook. Sometimes it shows that on there as well. Um, it says you have five for five okay. on Facebook, but uh, these reviews, yeah. they're written here. I don't know if they're Google reviews or Facebook reviews, but anyway, I think it's awesome because it just goes to show you um, just how important that knowledge graph is and how you can really own that space. And, you know, now as a contrast, I put my name in, and when I put it in separately, like I did Lisa's, like not as a name, but as the words inspire to thrive. That's what I searched on Google and got like a really complete knowledge graph, knowledge uh, box, whatever, whatever, uh, for Lisa. But watch when I put in right mix for business as just words. Uh, let me share you that screen because the contrast is so interesting. Uh, um, because of course I'm not trying, I'm a rookie, I didn't try, I don't know better. <laughs> and so this is what I got. Now look, this is awesome because there I am, right mixer business, a content writer for business. I'm first, but then look after that. First of all, my results are way, there's so many more under there because those terms, right and mix and business, I'm sure 
pull a lot of other things into it. And you'll see it talks about how the marketing mix is used in business and then marketing mix and, you know, developing a marketing mix and the four P's of marketing and even right marketing mix or right mix marketing, which are, you know, other people. Also, these questions, these related questions are related to marketing and writing and mix, marketing mix. It's not related to my site at all. So that would be a fail, but let's go and look at if I put in Google, um, if I put it in as right mix for business, one word, like I am right mix for business.com. Here's the result. Let's just take a peek at this. Cause I think it's interesting. Okay. What do you think, Lisa? Now, Oh, nice. I'm doing a lot better. <laughs> you yeah. see my right mix for business, uh, naming me as a content writer for business, which is good. But look at the first p sentence, Lisa. I think I have a mess up there because it's showing stuff from my footer. Copyright oh, yeah. 15 to 20, powered by Genesis, rights reserved. We This is not good. So oh, yeah. I, ha I sh probably need some. I mean, it does say content writer for business, which is a good. And it does show... Yeah good pages, even content creation hogging your time, which is really kind of a sign up page to um, opt in for me. Uh, then it does show that I have my home Facebook page. It does show some other, my LinkedIn. Um, and look at this. This is interesting. It shows some of my slide shares. These are all my work. But I clicked on um, one of them last night when I was checking into this. And it's a it's a version of one of my presentations. It's not even one I'm seeing right now. Whoops, on here. It was a different one. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm getting all that. But anyway, um, it was a different one on here, but it was a, I think it was the one I did with Ann Handley um, with quotes from her book, but it was in Spanish. It was a Spanish version when I clicked on the LinkedIn. It wasn't English. And then I also have Study the Solopreneur where I was also interviewed Oh, yeah, this one here, the slide share an with anisms. But look, at the bottom here, you don't see any uh, uh, related searches. This is kind of like all Sue Ann, all me. But I don't have anything on the side like Lisa has with a map or location because I never did set up a Google My Business. So. We'll have to get you going, Sue Ann. Do you think that's interesting, though, to show? Because. Sure. I think that, you know, that gives people an idea why it might make sense to be there. And the other thing that hit me, Lisa, is that I wasn't doing it because I was, you know, really hiding from the local market and trying to create a business completely, strictly digitally. And, you know, I wasn't worried so much about Google because I am making contacts. I am getting clients. I have had business for a number of years now, five, six years now. So something's working without me, you know, know dealing with Google so to speak but that's not probably smart thinking as a marketer or in business and I am starting to have a couple local clients now that you know I'm admitting that I do digital work <laughs> that sounds funny some reviews, so we're gonna get your Google my business up and get some reviews for you that would be nice to show other people and you know, you just, you don't know when you're going to lose a client. If, the, if you lose a client, you may need to gain a client. So it's always good to have your marketing out there. So what are the steps, Lisa, to get on Google My Business? And more importantly, just set yourself up to get noticed there. Not just be there, but get noticed, like your complete profile. Yeah, it, it takes time, like anything else. It takes time. First, you have to get verified, and then you have to have some photos. I had the photo you showed on mine was me teaching a class. So I wanted to show me actually, you know, working with clients. So that's why I have that particular image there. And I try to go in every week and update with a post. Usually it's something from my website or my blog. Sometimes it's a video. And I manage uh, one client, uh, I, I can mention him, I'm sure he won't mind. It's called Factory Carpet Outlet. It's a, a Rhode Island company. And he does really well on the Google My Business being a local company, that map I can see all the time, how many people actually called, how many people you know look him up on the map, 
for directions or visit the website. So you have all these insights with the Google My Business. And you can see them any any time. You know, you can check them daily, weekly, monthly. You know, I like to take a look at least monthly on there and um, kind of analyze how things are going. And I will say that during COVID, you do see a little bit of a drop off because people are not, you know, going out as much. But you still see the people calling and going to the website. Oh, sorry, Lisa. I, I had my mic off, dumb and dummy. <laughs> I didn't want you to hear anything in the background while I'm shuffling papers, <laughs> and then I turned me off. My question was: so you do want to go on and claim Google My Business, even if you're even if you're working digitally? Yes, that's the first step. Correct. And then you do want to fill out all the information, the categories that, you, like right. you said. And you don't and, have to fill out your address because if you're home based, you don't want your address, but it has you pick out an area. And I'm in the smallest state in the Union, Rhode Island. So my area is not just Rhode Island, but I believe it's also in the Connecticut area. I think they call it Windheim County. So it picks a county, a large county. Okay. I'd probably be Allegheny County in Pittsburgh. Um, okay. And then uh, the verifying process takes days. Or... Yeah, it may take a little longer right now because of Google work. All I think all the Google staff is working from home. Things are taking a little bit longer because they're doing so many other things. Um, but you, sh I would say within a week or two because I did have someone recently um, do a referral for me on there, a testimonial, and it did come through, but it took about two weeks. Well, let me ask you this. So what are your secret tips? to optimize the chances to get better results using Google My Business? Always make sure you're updating. You know, if you can update, it, I tell people at least once a week, but if you can do it more, great. Have some photos. People love to see photos of a business. If you're a digital business, you may have to be a little more creative, which I know you have no problems to win. <laughs> Thank you, can you. Do, you can do some videos, like we're, you know, and, and you video. actually post these on your Google My Business yes. page. You saw the video I posted of my ninth anniversary. Of right. I love I, it. That was a video I actually posted on the Google My Business. And sometimes I'll post when I'm with clients just to show, you know, the work that I actually do. And let me just say, Lisa works really hard. We are celebrating Lisa's two years of full time at Inspire to Thrive, and she is thriving. Customers love her. She is such a social, uh, busy social media marketing manager, and we're so lucky to have you as our thriving full throttle on social guru here at the Mix Sizzle and Shake Your Business podcast, Lisa. So let me you. celebrate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Both. Both. Uh, okay. One other, one other um, tip or, or kind of thing I wanted to not forget is that Google My Business now has a special feature. It's a badge for those, like a verification type badge, for those that do Google Ads. So if you're spending money on Google Ads and you have Google My Business, you can get this badge. It costs fifty dollars a month, but it gets you a little higher ranking and position there. So. It's, it's sort of rewarding people that use the Google Ads. Okay. And um, are, do you use Google Ads or do you use them with your clients? I have not used them in several years. Um, I have a couple people that I do refer folks to because it has gotten very complex to do the Google Ads. So I have enough as it is now doing Facebook. Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, you know, I'm wondering if, if, you know the payoff for the for the fifty dollars a month might be mighty or it might not be we'll have to wait and see yes yes uh because that could be a consideration um if you want to get more notice but you know i think when you really i really believe that when you produce quality content when you have consistent and creative uh, things going on and you're you know really putting it out there you're on your social media channels you're connecting with people and businesses 
I think Google finds you, um, or at least customers find you, at least in my experience. Because like I said, I've, I've created a digital business strictly digitally, and it would have been so much easier to go out into the world around me where I've done business for 30 years and I know people. But the challenge was, can I actually come up with a business strictly through digital means? Because when I first started, I didn't want my other business you know, before I stopped that and became this full time, I didn't want them to really know that I wasn't, you know, strictly their professional catering production and event design company. I so I was kind of, you know, secretively doing web work and writing and and copywriting. So um, now I feel like you know that digital business could use the Google My Business lift even to be known locally. Um, when I go to local WordPress events and so forth, I've picked up actually a couple clients. And uh, it seems like on LinkedIn, I see things for Pittsburgh area people hiring writers all the time. But I don't know if I want them to know I'm local because I like my remote world. I like uh, my behind the scenes world. So it's interesting though, because uh, it's another way for Google to recognize your business. And you know, Google rules the world, right? Almost. <laughs> At least, uh, let me ask you about Bing. Let, yeah. I, you know, I was just going to ask you because a lot of people have been talking about getting, uh, you know, how you set up your uh, Google Analytics or your Google uh, Search Console um, for Google to find out, you know, how you're doing and to get information. Um, I understand you can do the same or be verified, I guess, it would be with Bing as well. I, and I am, actually. I have been. I've done that process. And they actually work together because sometimes I'll get an email before a holiday and they'll say, are you open these, this holiday? What are your hours? Do you want to also, and Bing will send an email saying, do you want us to use the same info from Google? Wow. So they, yeah, they do connect. That's kind of That recent. is really interesting because yeah. I think some of the big players are realizing that we're all in it together and we all have to play together in the sandbox because, hey, digital is moving so fast, right, Lisa? You, I mean, it's it is, hard yeah. to keep up, but it's also fun to keep up. Um, well, have we missed anything on this Google features? Latest updates would be the new um, Google AdWords to get the check mark verified. Yeah, I think, well, there's, a, there's one other thing, and you can if you don't have a website, and I, I'm think I was thinking about this earlier before we came on. I have one client that does not have her website, and with Google My Business, you can have a website. Um, they have a website builder, and you can also have a landing page. And last I knew, they were still for free. So wow, that's, that's an option for some of the smaller businesses out there that don't have the you know people media. don't understand that that pe that businesses aren't on social media or don't have a website like that seems like unheard of in this day and age but you know i ran a local business for 30 years and i had no time nor need to spend time digitally or get a website because I already had a market and customers and you know enough clients and so forth so it would have been just taking away from my business to put in time there so that but as a general rule I would say that your website is your digital home and you want to have that property that you own because I wouldn't be a good good digital marketer or website girl wordpress girl if i didn't speak and <laughs> say that right yeah i said definitely if you can do that self-hosted website that's number one that's the most important that's your home because these social networking sites that could be gone tomorrow there's a lot of censorship that's happening there's a lot of things happening and having your own home is, is really best right now so well, I hope you enjoyed the show today. I really want to thank Lisa for being here. I hope you know, didn't mind that my countdown timer counts up because I'm backward and I'm new at all this production. Uh, I hope I wasn't too awkward with the banners. Oh, someone is speaking. Oh, my gosh. Somebody said, I. oh, Lisa, it's you. <laughs> I got to notice. I got to notice that Lisa's speaking to me. Um, again, if you're watching the replay, that's okay. Um, drop us a note. Uh, let us know what you think. And um, stop by again and catch the Mix, Sizzle, and Shake Your Business podcast as a live video show. And today, luckily, we had Lisa on board. 
Thank you for being here, Lisa. I really appreciate your time and effort. Thank you for having me. We'll talk soon. And everybody stop back again for the next time that we do the Mix, Sizzle, and Shake Your Business podcast on video. Have a great day.